What is excellence in tabletop role-playing games? Welcome to Gaining Advantage. Welcome to Gaining Advantage. We are using tabletop role-playing games like Dungeons and Dragons to help you make people's lives better. So now I want you to think, who has created fantasy miniatures to represent Down syndrome or cerebral palsy? or any other disability besides amputation, growth deficiency, or the need for a wheelchair. There's none as far as I know. Maybe a blind monk. So what year is it? It's 2022. Seems like it's time for some more representation on our X grids. This fall, we're launching a Kickstarter with a wide variety of disability representation. Now, art and sculpting is expensive because we want to respectfully compensate our artists, which ends up raising the cost of the miniatures. And so players who depend on disability checks don't have much disposable income. And so we want to keep costs down as much as possible while still making the project viable, which creates an opportunity for some of you. So now imagine this. You design a character. Maybe it's based on yourself or a friend or a family member with their permission, of course, or just an idea that you have. We create a stat block, full color art, full color 3D sculpt. And once the Kickstarter campaign finishes, you get a voucher for one of each physical miniature, including the one that you designed, and the collection of STL files so that you can 3D print copies for your players and friends and family. And then that figure gets included in the Kickstarter, which means that thousands of people all over the world will be using your character in their games. Isn't that cool? All right. Now, when we launch the Kickstarter, that tier is going to be $600 so that we can make sure to, to compensate everybody and cover the costs. But until the end of June, which is just a few more days, depending when you're catching this episode, it's just $550. And because we want to be able to uh, lower the overall cost, keep the cost of the minis down uh, by covering some of that overhead in advance. Now, if you're catching this after the end of June, we might extend it just a little bit longer with a slightly higher price tag. We really need to give our artists enough time before the campaign, which is why the other cutoff. So if you're interested, if you're capable of supporting us in that way and supporting this campaign, you can go to mini.inclusiverpg.com for details, and that link is in the show notes. So now let's get to our interview. The tabletop role-playing game space is growing exponentially. There's decent stuff that you hear a lot about, and then great stuff that you've never heard of. So how do you find the truly excellent? Today, we welcome New York Times best-selling and award-winning author and game designer, Matt Forbeck, to talk about the Diana Jones Award. Welcome, Matt. Hey, thanks for having me on. So what would you like us to know about you personally, specifically speaking to the tabletop role-playing game crowd? Oh, that's a good question. Um, well, you know, I've been at this for many years. I started out gaming, uh, went to my first Gen Con over 40 years ago now. I think this is my 41st coming up. Um, so this has been a passion of mine for a long time. I've been involved in the community for a long time. And I've made it my profession for a long time, too. When I was in college, I started out working for a number of different gaming companies, including Mayfair, Iron Crown, Grenadier Models, and such. And then moved on to work for Games Workshop, then did a bunch of freelancing. I ran a company called Pinnacle Entertainment Group. I was one of the founders of that, uh, where we did Deadlands and Brave New World and a bunch of other games. Uh, and most of the time these days, I uh, well, since then I've been doing freelancing again, most of the time these days I write novels and video games. But recently, uh, I've also kept my hand in doing tabletop games over the years, but uh, at a much more reduced level, right? Maybe a quarter of my time. Uh, however, that's changed last year because I'm working on the Marvel tabletop role-playing game, uh, as well as doing Shotguns and Sorcery, which is, a, we did a role-playing game from the Cypher system, and we're doing a fifth edition version right now that's based upon some novels that I wrote. Cool. Well, it's got to be great to to turn uh, something that you wrote, a, a novel, into into a game. Oh, yeah, it's fun. I mean, and honestly, this actually started out as a third edition uh, source book when I was coming up with the system entirely in the first place. When I was doing the world building and everything, I actually sold it to Mongoose Publishing as a D20 setting. And then uh, my wife became pregnant with quadruplets back in 2020, 2001. 
So that kind of threw everything into the back burner for a while. Yeah, <laughs> I, I bet. Back to it. The kids are now, you know, all healthy and happy and 20 years old, which is kind of crazy. But, uh, uh -huh. you know, getting older beats the alternative, I always say. Yeah, absolutely. All right. So tell us about your work with the Diana Jones Award. Yeah, it's an interesting thing. Um, I mean, to outsiders, it probably seems, you know, well, especially people come to it fresh, like, oh, this established and well thought of award that uh, people really appreciate. But, you know, I was there at the beginning. It was actually James Wallace who started it. Uh, James is a fantastic game designer. He did the Extraordinary Adventures of Baron Munchausen, Alas Vegas, uh, Once Upon a Time, which is a great storytelling card game. James is one of the original storytelling uh, tabletop game designers, right? I mean, he did a lot of the original stuff that uh, inspires people to this day. But he also somehow wound up with a trip, a pub trivia trophy that had been constructed from the remains of a burnt up copy of the Indiana Jones role playing game that had been encased in a plexiglass pyramid, right? Uh, and apparently the guys at TSR UK, when they had shut the place down and burned up a bunch of this stuff and somebody had scooped up a few of the pieces and made a trophy out of it for whatever reason. And then they used to compete with Games Workshop over the years. And uh, at one point or another, it fell into James's hands and he's like, well, I got this trophy. I should make a, uh, I should make an award to go with it. Yeah, we should <laughs> give it to people. So it became this traveling trophy that we had for 20 years. And we actually lost it last year. It got lost in the mail from Canada to uh, Indianapolis. So sadly has gone. We're going to have a new one uh, prepared this year. But um, I, the Diana Jones Award, as its original idea, was to recognize excellence in gaming. And we try to do that every year. So, uh, you know, to, <laughs> Some people think we do a good job. Some people think you know, we stumble occasionally. And we also don't really restrain ourselves to one particular type of thing. So as far as we're concerned, as long as it's excellent and related to tabletop games, we're willing to consider it. So some years it's a designer uh, like Peter Atkinson or Jordan Weissman uh, or Eric Lang. Some years it's a game like Starcrossed or you know dozens of others that we looked at. Uh, sometimes it's an event, right? We uh, honored Gen Con. We, one year we honored Irish gaming convention charity auctions, which you know, seems kind of odd, but it was something that the majority of us thought we're doing great. We want to recognize that. Um, so it's you know kind of grown into its own thing over the years, and it's taken 20 years now. It's been to this point. So it, you know, if you keep doing something over and over, it becomes a ritual, right? And that's really, really what it has become for us at Gen Con. It started out as my 33rd birthday party at Gen Con uh, 20 some years ago, and that was the year that George Bush gave all the Americans $300 tax rebates. So, and my birthday happened to fall on the Saturday of Gen Con that year. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to buy all my friends beer and we're going to have some beer and pretzels and we're going to have a party. And we did that on Saturday night. And then James showed up and said, would you mind if we give out the award at your party this year? I said, no, it sounds like a fantastic idea. Um, and it was such a great time that all the people who showed up said, you have to do this every year. So we've been doing it for now 20 some years. And uh, the first time I pitched in for all the beer and whatever, I think uh, Shane Hensley, who was my partner at Pinnacle in those days, uh, pitched in for a barrel as well. And nowadays I just pass around a hat and say, all right, who's in for chipping in for the beer to buy for our friends? Uh, you know, basically give out drink tickets. And it's open to all gaming industry professionals. So if you're somebody who's interested in doing games or has been doing games at a professional level, you're more than welcome to join us. Uh, just contact me at matt at forbeck.com and we'll see about getting you on the invitation list. And we hold it every uh, Wednesday night before Gen Con, on Gen Con Eve, as we like to call it. And basically, it's at a bar in Indianapolis. And we sit around and talk to our friends and catch up with each other and then stop for about 20 minutes to hand out an award and then go back to all that. So we don't take ourselves too seriously. But on the other hand, over the years, we've realized that uh, other people have taken us seriously, and maybe we should start doing that too. So recently, we founded the Diana Jones Award Foundation. So we actually just recently became a uh, nonprofit organization that's filing for 501c3 status. So it will be an official charity. Uh, one of the reasons we're doing this, because last year we launched this thing called the Emerging, Des Emerging Designer Program, where we actually reach out to uh, game designers. We try to get people to nominate game designers who have only been at it for like three years or less and are doing amazing stuff. And a lot of times when you're in that situation, you're maybe... Uh, just starting out, you don't know how to network with people. You don't know how to get your stuff published. You don't know how to get in the broader community. So we actually uh, try to focus a spotlight on a small slate of the nominees, uh, the finalists for the uh, Emerging Designer Program. 
usually four or five people. And then uh, the top person by our boats, we actually bring out to Gen Con. It's essentially a Gen Con scholarship. And so we fly them out to Gen Con, put them up in a free hotel room, and give them a food uh, bonus for the week so they can eat too while they're there. So ideally, you know, it doesn't matter nice. if, you're, if you're wealthy or poor or whatever else, we're treating you the same. Um, it's and We try to reach into marginalized communities. We try to make a very distinct effort for that because, you know, over the years, uh, most game designers have tended to be, you know, people like me, which are white, straight, cis males, right? And we want to, I've, we've been very delighted to see the diversity and inclusiveness growing in the industry. And we want to try to encourage that. So uh, encouraging that at the emerging designer level, uh, where we have a lot of people coming from communities that have traditionally not been part of tabletop gaming, but have really grown into that in the last 10, 15 years. Uh, we think we're, we're hopefully, we hope we're trying to help out with that, right? And we've been pretty uh, excited about the success so far, although last year being a pandemic year was kind of tricky. This year is going to be the first you know, full on Gen Con theoretically, even though we're still in a pandemic uh, and we'll see how it goes, but we're pretty excited about all that. Cool. So how have you seen lives change because of your work? Uh, the, as a Diana Jones? Well, I think, you know, the people who get the award will often say this is the most meaningful award I've ever gotten, right? And, uh, you know, I can't put those words in their mouths, and I'm, I'm flattered that they would think so. But I think the reason is because it's an award given out to somebody by their peers, not by a vote, not by uh, a public th uh, flogging of, hey, go vote for me on this website, uh, not that kind of stuff. It's not publicly done. Up until recently, it was a secret cabal of game designers. And over the years, a number of us have outed ourselves. I think about half of us are, are public about it now. Because, again, we realized that, you know, maybe a secret cabal wasn't the most inclusive <laughs> and mm -hmm. uh, uh, kind way to go about things. And, you know, showing people who we were and what we were doing was probably a better way of doing it. So uh, there's still some of us who don't want to have their names involved because they don't want to get hassled about it. And they want to have people lobbying them for the award. But, um, you know, for somebody to get an award and say, you know, this isn't just like a popularity award, right? This is uh, something where people sat down, debated this, thought about the coolest things in gaming, then turned around and said, this is the coolest thing in gaming. Honestly, getting a nomination is a pretty amazing accomplishment, period. Uh, and then to win it, you know, a lot of people are like, well, this is, really does mean something to me. And it's a traveling trophy. It sits on their uh, mantle or wherever the hell they want to put it for about a year. And then they bring it to Gen Con and we hand it off to the next person. And we've established traditions over the years where if the person who had it last year is able to come to the show, they get to be the person to hand it to the next person, right? So physically transfer the award from one person to another. And it's really been kind of amazing to see these traditions just grow up around it. Um, you know, when we started out, it was not something that any of us had planned. And we, we took it seriously, but not, you know, not to the point where we were precious about it, right? Yeah, we, we took the debate seriously, we meant it, but we also were like, this is fun and we're doing it as friends and we'll see how it goes. But uh, so to see people really get excited about that and feel strong about it was, um, I think it reflected back to us that we should take it more seriously. And that's probably where the Emerging Designer Program came from. So, and we're hoping the Emerging Designer Program helps people out. It's a very young program at the moment, so it's hard to tell if it's doing a whole lot of good, but you know, I think bringing new people out to Gen Con, which is the premier show in the industry and, and showing them around and uh, giving them a leg up is always a good thing. Awesome. Yeah, that's so great. I know so many people that are, you know, that just struggle uh, to the, the talented people and, oh, yeah. you know, there's, there's so much talent and, but there's, there's also, you know, you look on, uh, on DM skilled or drive through or, you know, or something like that. And, and it's just, there's so much there. And, and how do you, how do you sort through it? How do you, how do you get your name, to, you know, to float to the top or, or whatever? So, yeah. Right. And it's, and oftentimes it's a lot more about marketing than it is about quality. So that's, that's always the challenge. And yeah, honestly, from my point of view, this is something that people did for me just naturally when I was growing up. I, I was privileged uh, more than your average person in the sense that I grew up in Southern Wisconsin, which is where Gen Con and TSR, the original publishers of Dungeons and Dragons started. So I was able to just have my dad drive me to Gen Con and drop me off and then pick me up in the evening when I was 13 years old. Right. So I've been doing this since I was a you know, pretty young kid. And uh, not everybody's going to have that kind of an advantage, right? You know, very few people are going to have that kind of advantage. So we're trying to expand that out to where we can bring more people in. And as we, actually, as we raise more funding, we're hoping to bring more of those designers out. So eventually, maybe we'll be able to bring out the entire slate of finalists as opposed to just the quote-unquote winner, right? 
Um, Cause you know, we'd like to have it be, uh, you know, we'd like to do as much good as we possibly can. And, you know, we're going to start passing the hat around a little bit more strongly these days with that in mind. Cool. Great idea. All right. So you just rescued a gin from the hands of me, Freddy, and it offers you three wishes to achieve your goals to make the world better. What do you wish for? Oh, I mean, world peace and hunger and, uh, oh uh, man, I got some people I would like to eliminate, but I'm not going to get into that. <laughs> um, <laughs> So, uh, you know, from a gaming point of view, what I'd like to do is just, uh, if, you know, from the point of view of the Diana Jones Award, what I'd like to do is have people be excited about game and games and be as inclusive and welcoming as possible, right? I do think that uh, one of the great powers of games, tabletop games, is to sit around the table with other people, especially conventions that you've never met before and strike up immediate friendships and have amazing, memorable encounters that you can't have in any other way. Right. Uh, or it just facilitates that. I mean, I've got people I've met at conventions I've known uh, 30, 40 years later that I still talk to and catch up with. And I would like to have everybody have that kind of experience to be able to share in that. So uh, I don't know how I would express that to the gen because they're tricky bastards and they are always trying <laughs> to uh, make that uh, get you hung up on things. But hopefully we would get the gen to sit down and play with us and they would actually get on board and you know feel enthusiastic about it as well. There you go. Uh, so what one message would you like to give gamers who are looking for a better tabletop experience? You know, I think um, the best thing you can do for games is to figure out how to play them and make sure that everybody at the table is having fun, right? And there's a lot of different ways to do that. Sometimes it's figuring out ahead of time, like, what kind of games you all want to play? Are you interested in doing just card games? I mean, hell, even if you're just playing poker or, you know, Pinochle or whatever, uh, my family plays speed solitaire like crazy, which, you know, we actually break fingers at, I think sometimes. Um, so, you know, whatever you're playing, it's really just an excuse to get together with other people. Right. And, and hopefully have an enjoyable experience at it. But if you're playing games where not everybody's having a good time, or if you're running a game specifically to disrupt and annoy or anger people, you're doing it wrong in my opinion. Right. As long as everybody at the table is having fun, that doesn't mean they're all winning. They have to have a good experience, whether they're winning or losing. Then you're doing a great thing. And that's what I really want to see more of. Yeah, that's a really good point. A lot of people feel, you know, pressured to be a good GM. And, you know, you hear about the Matt Mercer effect and all that kind of stuff. And, and yeah, no, if you're having fun. <laughs> no, I mean, that's a great guy. And he does, you know, but what he's doing is, is art at a different level, right? He's doing mm -hmm. performative art to show on YouTube, to show people all these great, great, amazing storytellers they have. But you don't have to replicate that. I mean, as long as you just get together with your friends or whoever, and you have an enjoyable time for three to four hours on an evening when you're doing this, what, what yeah. else do you need out of life, right? Enjoy yourself. Absolutely. All right. Uh, so what one message would you like to give gamers who are looking to improve the tabletop experience? I would say... You know, think about what you're doing. Go into it um, mindfully in that, you know, try to figure out who you want at your table, who's going to make it a most enjoyable experience, uh, and not just for you, but for everybody at the table. And try to figure out what kind of games you want to play with them. And, you know, there's a lot of great tools nowadays, too. They have these safety tools for role-playing games. If you're doing those, I recommend doing stuff like the X card or whatever else, or just have a talk with your friends. It doesn't have to be formal. But people need to have the power to basically stick up their hand and say, whoa, 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 I'm not, I don't want to go here without any repercussions, right, for whatever reason. And everybody's got their own reasons for these things. So don't push them. The people, if you're hoping to spring something on people, ask them ahead of time or, you know, figure out ahead of time if it's going to be a good surprise or if it's going to send them screaming into the corner, right? And if there's a chance it's going to send you them screaming into the corner, don't do it, right? This is their day off. They're having fun. No, you know, most people aren't doing this for money. They're doing this for entertainment. And if it causes them to flip out and never want to see you again, I don't think that's a good result for anybody, right? And again, try to do something that's inclusive, that's fun, that everybody at the table can enjoy. And, you know, that doesn't mean it has to be like all happy joy joy. I mean, sometimes horror adventures or, you know, if you're playing fiasco, these things can be really heart-wrenching, whatever. But again, know where people's boundaries are. Uh, know where, where uh, you can, and try to keep away from them, right? Don't nudge up to them like some edge lord. Just say, look, we're going to have this game. And we're, as long as everybody knows what they're going into and you stick to what everybody expects, I think that's the greatest thing. Just establish expectations early. All right. So what projects are you working on now that you can talk about? Uh, well, I'm just about to ship to press the uh, Shotguns and Sorcery 5e edition. We have a, if you go to Backer Kit, 
or to uh, fourback.com shotguns and sorcery, something like that. Uh, you can actually get on the pre-order, which is going to press, I think, next week. So hurry if you're interested in that. Uh, I'm also working on the Marvel tabletop role-playing game. We had a playtest edition come out in April, and we're going to be releasing some new updates to that in the near future, uh, which hasn't been publicly announced yet, but will be very soon. And you'll see what we're doing. Um, we're all that's going to have a new game coming out, a full 350 some page hardcover rule book, 320 pages, I think is what we're aiming at in uh, 2023. Um, I'm also working, uh, I did a bunch of writing for a game called Hard West 2, which is a table uh, video game that's coming out later this year. And I'm currently also writing uh, later today more dialogue for Warhammer 40,000 Tacticus, which is a role, uh, tabletop, I'm sorry, a mobile game that people can play on their phones or their iPads or whatever. And it's a lot of fun. So they just make me uh, do all the dialogue and I get to write orcs this week, which is just tons of fun. Cool. All right. So we'll have all your contact information in our show notes, but where's the one best place you'd like people to start to learn more about you or to contact you? Uh, the easiest thing is to go to forbeck.com, F-O-R-B-E-C-K.com. You can also find me on Twitter at M Forbeck. And, you know, if you really need to reach out to me, you can email me at Matt at Forbeck.com. I'm always happy to answer questions and help people out. All right. Also, Matt, thanks for so much. Diana, well, oh, I'm sorry. But also, if you're talking about the Diana Jones Award, go to dianajonesaward.org and you can find out more about that. We just announced the uh, nominees for the award this year, and we're going to be uh, giving out the award on August 3rd. So shortly after that, you should be able to figure out who won as well. All right. So, Matt, thanks so much for coming on the show, and everyone check out those links in the show notes. Thanks for having me. Just a reminder, when we have people available, we also include a segment on the show called Playing the Other where people with disabilities, neurodiversity, and mental illness come and talk about their experiences and how their lived experiences relate to gaming. And it's also a chance for creators. If you're a, a role-playing game creator or something else, an artist or something, and you want to tell people about some of the cool stuff you've made, uh, we'd be happy to feature that and put some links in there for you. If you'd like to be a guest on that segment, just go to wormworkspublishing.com slash contact. And also, we want to let you know this summer at our Patreon, there is a we are releasing a four-part adventure. And while normally our uh, our free stuff is more for the slightly higher levels, uh, we are going to make this available to all patrons uh, just to celebrate the summer and to prepare for uh, some of the projects that we have coming up. And so we're going to make that four-part adventure available to all of our patrons throughout the summer, uh, releasing one part of it each month. And uh, we're going to have some other real big announcements coming soon. And so I invite you to check out the link in our show notes to the Patreon as well. Now, if you see this show being helpful, if you're watching this on YouTube, hit that like button. If you'd like to see more, subscribe. If you know people who need to hear this, please pass it on to them. Send them that link. And if you, like me, think that everyone needs to hear this, pass it on to your social media friends. Go into your favorite podcast uh, area and hit those ratings and, and give us those five-star reviews to help pe more people find it thanks to the algorithm. So thanks so much for your time, and we'll close with this question. What would make your tabletop experience more excellent? <laughs>